Okay, this week I've been asked to do some firmware testing for a smart trainer. That involves a number of uh, use case testing, um, a number of different step tests, a number of intervals, sprints, you name it, giving them absolute hell and giving the company feedback. The most important part of this is to have an accurate and reliable base to compare the readings to. So my quark has usually been pretty good. As I've mentioned in the past, I self calibrate this with a certified weight. It's been a few months since I've done it. So what I'm gonna do this morning is whilst we watch Kona live and we have Zwift running for a bit of uh, just to rack up some XP points I'm going to be comparing my quark readings to the Neo now we know the Neo is within about one to one and a half percent accuracy so that should give me a good baseline if it's out by any more than about one and a half percent I'll then go find the 20 kilo weight and we'll do a hang test off that Hopefully we won't have to do that today, but I'll definitely do it in another video because it's quite an interesting process. So let me run you through what we've got set up this morning. So as mentioned in the pain cave here, we have Kona Live. So that's some good entertainment there. The guys are seven hours in. The women are just about to hit seven hours. So should be within probably oh, 65 minutes of the finish there. We've got Zwift loaded here and Nidro. <laughs> I'm getting some ride-ons. I haven't actually pedaled the pedal stroke yet, but thank you everyone. Got that running there just for some visual effect. I'll get some tunes going as well. But right, to the actual detail. Tax Neo, which we know is within one to one and a half percent of power accuracy. So I'm gonna warm this up for about 15 minutes before we do anything. Make sure it's got the latest firmware. We have my Quark, sorry I ran past it. Quark power meter, this is a few years old now. I love this thing, this has been rock solid. I will make sure the latest firmware is on here. We'll do a zero offset. So pedaling backwards, zero offset. Rest the pedal at six o'clock and then we reset that on the head unit up here. Speaking of head units, so I've got a Garmin 800, the old trusty 800 that I've kept and I've got the new 820 as well. The 800 will be paired to the Tax Neo and output of the power and the 820 is paired to the Quark. So the process will be warm up for 15 minutes and then offset both systems. I might even do a reboot of the Neo, just to be sure. And then a series of step tests. Hold those lines as stable and as smooth as we can, using probably 100 to 90 to 100 RPMs. So what I don't mind too much about this work is that it's actually good training. A good step test will get me some good solid workouts in some of the mid-range zones and some of the high zones, but also looking at the data as well, making sure they're recorded. So just by the way, on the Garmin's for doing this, so the Garmin's are both set to record at one second intervals with no auto pause. So as soon as both of those are lapped, we can do a really, really good comparative multi-range analysis using the old WKO3, if you remember that. Still pretty good, we can also export into CSV. Let's get riding. It's been a few weeks since I've been on the Neo, but I tell you what, the thing that really gets me every time I jump on after being on other trainers, there's no noise. Listen, I can't even... To answer partially, kick it or Neo, kick it or Neo, if you need low noise, this point in time, it's the Neo. Just reminds me I've got to keep cleaning my chain though. That's the only noise I'm hearing. Got these on three second average. That's looking pretty good to me. What are your thoughts? I've got 125, 120, it's bouncing around 117, both. Both on three second average. Looking good. Let's go, Quark. Okay, fast forward a few days because life gets in the way and other things came up. I have two really good clean data points. Now the bad news for you guys is you won't get to see me in this video hang the 20 kilo weight off the quark for true calibration. The good news for me is I don't have to hang that weight off. My arms and 20 kilos don't really agree. Anyhow, so let me run you through what I got. Now what I got, the trusty five year old quark was within a few percent of the Neo at 350 watts or so. And a one minute effort at 487 watts. They both equaled 487. Let's run through the math to make sure they're in the right zones. 
99.42. That's close enough. What this will allow me to do now is use the quark as a baseline test for other trainers that I get. Speaking of other trainers, one, two, three, and I've got another one out on higher. But this one here, I've got some beta firmware for this Wahoo kicker that I'm going to test out to ensure the power numbers line up. So that's an hour 10 done. Uh, really interesting results using the different firmware and different modes that I'm actually testing out. So I could spend 45 minutes explaining my 45 minutes of frustration trying to get everything lined up and either Bluetooth or amp paired. Nobody wants to hear that, but I have a whole list of uh, results here to feed back to the team behind the firmware that I'm testing. Um, just another thing of note as well. Now that I'm using both the 800 and 820, both at the same time, something's really, really apparent. And I'm really leaning back towards the 800. If the 820 didn't have all the extra features, I'm not sure I'd be using it. So I'll run through those in another video. But that's just standard morning of uh, testing, training, and hopefully contributing back to the um, indoor cycling community with better firmware and more accurate results. Okay, back to it. Thanks for watching. So why do I ride indoors so much? Well, this weather. Terrible Melbourne. Terrible. Summer's coming. Soon. <laughs>